Creedmoor Sports just came out with the TRX 925 scale. This touts 0 0.01 grain accuracy. In this video, we're going to check it out. Kevin you here from UltimateReloader.com. I just got the TRX 925 scale from Creedmoor Sports. We're going to waste no time. Let's get this baby out of the box. So here's the contents of the box. We've got the TRX 925 scale assembly. We've got a static free pan. We've got the platen, the AC adapter, the instructions. I like this. We've got three different weights, two grams, 10 grams, and 50 grams. And that should result in a more accurate calibration profile. And then we've got the five parts that make up the windscreen. So what I'm gonna do next is put everything together. Well, that didn't take long. I assembled the windscreen frame. That's this rectangular piece here. I put the platen on, I put the pan on the platen, put the lid on the windscreen, plugged the AC power in. Now we should be ready to power it on for the first time. And I'm just gonna let this warm up for at least a half an hour. Then we can tackle the calibration procedure. So I actually left the scale plugged in overnight. This baby is definitely up to operating temperature. And as I mentioned previously, the scale kit comes with the two gram, the 10 gram, and the 50 gram set of weights that are F1 class. Now this is something that I'm still learning about. This is an incredibly tight tolerance and process for calibrating a scale. Now, when we get down to this level of precision, we're gonna bust out the white lab gloves. Now you don't necessarily need a set of white lab gloves, but uh, you don't want to get fingerprints, dust, or dirt on your calibration weights. And what I'm going to do, there's two types of calibration for this scale. There's the wake up calibration and then there's a full calibration. If you're just resuming, you want to do a wake up calibration. If you want to do a full calibration, all you need to do is disconnect power to the scale and then reconnect power and turn it on and when it's done turning on it should be flashing two for the two gram weight and there it is so now all we need to do is take our two gram weight put it on the platen and when it shows two solid without the flashing, then we can move on to the next weight. 10, okay. So now we're gonna take the 10 gram weight, put it on the scale. 10 is solid on the display. So now it's gonna go through and ask us for the 50 gram weight. Fifty is solid. There we go. We're back down to zero. We are calibrated. So let's weigh some powder charges so that we can see how the scale is going to perform in a reloading context. First, I'm going to go over what I've got here. So I've taken the draft screen off of the scale. This is a good way to get started, but I should note that with a scale this sensitive, even a slight air draft in the room, a fan, an air conditioner, convective currents, whatever it happens to be, 
can cause fluctuations in your readings, which is you know definitely not what you want. Now, when we get this all completely dialed in, you're going to want to do something like cut a hole or drill a hole in the side of this draft screen so that your trickler tube can come through. You know, these are all things that you can investigate. And if you're careful about the air currents, which I'm trying to be now, I've turned off all of the HVAC system here, we're likely to get uh, close to optimal results. But we could see a little bit of fluctuation here. Now, this is the Hornady Twi Quick Trickle, and I'm using it because it's got a really long trickling tube. Now, there's several tricklers on the market that have either long tubes or extendable tubes. Some of them screw on or are removable in some way. And that's the kind of configuration that you're gonna to wanna to have here. And the height of the pan that we're gonna to have to clear is about three and three eighths of an inch. So just know that that's the kind of height that you're gonna need. Another reason that I used the quick trickle is it's got adjustable height. It's got this cast iron base. It could be as simple as using some sort of shim material under your trickler, or if you've got an adjustable base, several models available, that is gonna be a plus here. But you're gonna need a total of, I'm gonna say from the edge, it needs to be about three and a quarter inches from where the edge of the, of the base is. And if you have that kind of reach, you're definitely gonna be good. I kind of have this right in the, emptying right into the middle of the pan and I've lowered it so that the granules don't have excessive drop. Just how I like to set things up, that way you don't have granules bouncing out. We've also got the Forster Benchrest powder measure over here. It looks like we've got a good stable zero. This charge weight should be somewhere in the mid 30s of grains. I'll put that right in the middle. Because I'm demonstrating and testing here, I'm being very careful about the placement of the pan on the platen. 34.34 grains. Now let's see what happens when we add individual granules of Varget. 34.34, one granule. There's this unstable dot here right above the power button, 34.38. One more here. We've got our unstable dot. 34.40. That's 0 0.02 difference between the last reading and this reading with the, that granule. That is exactly what I would expect. I did not see that being detected. Let's try one more. Unstable uh, 34.42. So if we're right on the threshold of the resolution of the scale, we may or may not see one granule. We're right down there in that region. 34.42. Okay, so let's do a repeatability test. I'm going to get this trickling tube out of the way so that we don't have the chance of a granule dropping. 34.42. If see if I breathe, it's even picking that up. Okay. So we're going to go all the way here, right in the middle. We're right on that edge of 34.40. Okay. Again, we're getting down close to the resolution of the scale here. Thirty-four point four zero, same exact result. Yeah, so we're right down there within about point zero one grains, which is an excellent result. Okay, we're not quite done with powder charges yet. We're going to double this load up to simulate something like a three hundred Win Mag or three hundred PRC Magnum powder charge. Also. You'll notice 0, 0.00. I've observed that the, the zero drift seems to be a non-issue with the scale. Here we go, zero. And getting back down. 0, 0.00. So that is definitely a good sign. It helps that we've uh, warmed up the scale. Okay, so I'm gonna Okay. Zero point 
So let's do our double powder charge. Get into magnum territory here. Okay. Sixty-eight point six four. We're still stabilizing. Perks I'm moving around here. Sixty-eight point six five. Let's see about our repeatability here. Sixty-eight point six five, and for a third time. Sixty-eight point six six. So we're within that point zero one. Excellent. Let's add some granules and see what's going to happen here. Sixty-eight point six seven. Sixty-eight point six eight. Sixty-eight point six six nine. So it's able to detect each of those granules of Vargut even at magnum charge level. Next, we're going to take a look at side-by-side -side accuracy. What I've got here is the A and D EJ fifty four D two scale. This scale has a resolution of about three thousandths of a grain. So this is a very very sensitive scale, very accurate scale. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the pan. I'm just going to go ahead and re-zero this on both. Okay, that says zero. I'm just going to hit the tear button just to make sure we're really, really teared out. Okay. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. Hit our zero. We're going to actually need to switch to grains over here. Okay, we've got the stable circle. Over here, we've got a circle when we're not stable. It's just a, a different way to represent the same thing, essentially. Okay, so we're going to put a powder charge in here. 68.88. Let's see what we say. See over here on the TRX. 925. 68.87. <laughs> These two agree within 0 0.01 grain, that's one one hundredth of a grain, one grain is one seven thousandth of a pound. That is a great result. So there you go, the Creedmoor Sports TRX 925 hands-on in depth. I was just on the Creedmoor Sports website. They very recently made this scale available. This is an all new product for them. It is listed at about $350 street price on the website. Compare that to the EJ54D2 from Cambridge Environmental. Different scales with different capabilities. This has RS-232 for data output. EJ54D2 has USB for output. EJ54D2 is priced a little higher, probably around $400 to $450, depending on what deal you find on it. Plus, it doesn't come with the three calibration weights. I know. Decisions, decisions. Creedmoor Sports is a great US-based company. They're great people there. They're experts with reloading. So if you're shopping for a scale, you're going to want to think about the TRX 925. Here's my question for you. Is what scale are you using and what do you think of the TRX 925? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Don't forget to click on that first link in the video description. We'll have more specs, product links, and so on and so forth in the full article. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.